Hello and welcome to NeuroHabits.com. Have you seen the latest movie with the talking chimp? Yes, Rise of the Planet of the Apes. Could that become a possibility? Wouldn't it be so cool if we could start communicating with smart chimps? Think of all the benefits we could have. We could have more researchers trying to find cures to diseases. We could have more researchers exploring the deepest forests in search for new species. We could have more researchers trying to find solutions to our everyday problems. That would be possible if we could have extra smart help. Rise of the Planet of the Apes features one smart chimp by the name of Caesar. Due to some genetic manipulation that enhances his brain, he becomes smart to the point that he is able to speak as fluently as a human. However, no matter how cool that might seem, the movie made one big mistake. It's that an increase in intelligence does not lead to the ability to speak. Of course, the brain is required for language, but it is not sufficient for speech. You see? Chimps and humans have slightly different throat morphologies. Humans have a smaller mouth and a larger pharynx. This allows our tongue and lips the ability for the more subtle positioning that is required for spoken words. Our voice box, the pharynx, is also much lower in our throats, which allows us greater ability to produce different sounds. Our lungs are also made so that we are able to hold our breath longer and speak evenly for longer periods of time. In chimps, however, the morphology only allows them to make loud, short cries that drop down in volume very rapidly. So, if we want to have talking chimps, in addition to a brain-enhancing drug, we also need to find a drug that would change the genetic makeup of the chimp in such a way that its throat morphology resembles ours and also that would give it a slightly larger skull. There are some requir requirements to language. Number one is a lateralized and specialized brain. In us, the left hemisphere specializes in language. We have, for example, Proca's area, which is for speech output. We have Bernicke's area, which is for language comprehension. We have the arcuate fasciculus, which links both together. And of course, many other brain areas that are required. Number two, we also need a morphology that allows us to output language, to take it out in the real world, to take it out in the real world, like speech. For this, we need a drop of the voice box, the larynx, down in the throat. It requires to have a smaller mouth, a larger pharynx, and of course, again, many other aspects. Thank you for watching this video. Please visit www.neurohabits.com for more information, videos, and other cool stuff.